Hey y'all, how's everybody doing? Well, I wanted to do our um, Better Than Therapy um, scripture for the week. And um, so I have the scripture and it's one of my favorites. It's one of the ones that I use when um, I'm talking to you about what, what we do with our lives as Christians ongoing. And so this particular scripture is a wonderful scripture for that. It's it's just like a, a life verse, if you will. Do y'all have? Comment below if you have a life verse and tell me what it is. The one that you just kind of feel like describes what you believe for your life out of all the scriptures in the Bible that really speak to you. And and maybe it's not that others don't. It's just this that particular one that you name may be the one that just really is your it's your life verse. Um so mine is Colossians 2, verses seven, uh, 6 and 7. Colossians 2, chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. And this is the part of it that is so important because we talk about our faith. We talk and, and we learn about the Lord. We stay in the Word and prayer, being around other Christians, try to be influenced in um, good sermons and teachings and classes, Bible studies and, and uh, alone time with the Holy Spirit where He teaches our spirit about him and we grow in him and it's a wonderful thing and that's what this scripture is talking about it's Colossians 2 6 and 7 and it says so walk in him having been firmly rooted being built up in him and established in your faith so you walk in Him because you have been very firmly rooted. There's been things in your life since your baptism and getting into Bible studies and listening to the Word of God through your preacher, um, being alone with the Holy Spirit and Him teaching you as you open the Bible, the Word of God, and He speaks to you and He teaches you because He is the comforter and He is the teacher and He's the guide. Um, so you've been firmly rooted in the base of your faith when you first got born again. And then you've been built up in him by doing those things. And, and um, sometimes he will take you through a trial and uh, you'll come through and your faith will be built because of it. And, um, and that's where it says, and being built up in him and established in your faith. How? Because he takes you through trials and tribulations and walks you through to the other side. And even though it wasn't easy, even though it may not have been the outcome that you feel like you should have had, you do learn from him. And you realize, okay, Lord, this is a chance for you to shine. It's a chance for you to teach me. And my faith in you is more than it ever was before. That's because he's building up your faith. Why? Because there's going to come a day when you die. And when you, you do know that, right? Nobody's getting out of this world alive. That's what my daddy used to always say. Um, he's still alive. He just used to always say it. But um, we want to have our faith built. We want to have the kind of faith that transitions us from this world to the next. And don't be afraid. Don't sit there and go, oh, my faith may not be enough. What if I can't make it across the divide? Look, it's not your faith. It's actually him building you up and he will be enough for you when that day comes. He will take you to the other side. Don't you know that's what John 14, 1 through, uh, I guess about 11, John chapter, no, I'm sorry, not 1. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It's John chapter 14, 1 through 11. And it's one of my favorite groupings of scriptures because it is comforting to us to know the truth about our ending. And uh, it's where Jesus also affirms himself as God all, kind, all, all the way through it. He says, um, trust God, trust also in me. Now, why would Jesus say, trust God in me? He wouldn't say, well, trust God in another God. It's because he is God. So, trust God, trust also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, and if it weren't true, I would have told you. Some translations say, in my Father's house are many rooms. If it's not, if it weren't true, I would have told you. Now, you know how we've been doing this um, little Bible uh, daily devotional called Your Name? And um, it's where, oh, this isn't it. <laughs> anyway, it's, but where is it? Anyway, it's a little notebook like this. I think it's in the stack over there. But anyway, 
I gotta go through my desk and clear it out all out a little bit, but um, it all it is is it's a little spiral bound notebook where they took scriptures, put it on there, and stuck my personal name in there. It's a little template where you can put your friend's name or your some special person to use name in there. And so every time that the scripture speaks, it actually adds your name in there. So I like that because I actually do that in that grouping of scriptures. So I'll go ahead and finish it out. But it's again John 14, 1 through 11. It's one of my all time favorite groupings of scriptures. So if it weren't true, Beth, I would have told you. That's Jesus talking to me. Saying, Beth, if it weren't true, I'm Jesus. I am not a liar. I am not crazy. I tell the truth and I have a sound mind. I'm Jesus. Beth, if it weren't true, I would have told you. What a comfort. It's all true. It's all true. It's all true. Thank God that it's true. Everything that I'm believing on is true. How do I know? Because Jesus told me he is not a liar and he is not a nut. He is God in the flesh. And he says, let me tell you something. If it weren't true, I would have told you. But I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, here's even, gosh, it's so good. I will come back and take you to be with me where I am. Where's Jesus? People say he's in my heart. This Christ, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of God lives in you. That's true. After you accept him, he comes and lives in your heart. Where is the physical Jesus? Well, he left this earth. Where'd he go? Back to the Father. Well, who is he? God's Word. He is God's spoken Word. He came here in the flesh. The Word became flesh. John 1, 1, I mean, John 1, 14, sorry, tells us the Word became flesh. Who was Jesus before he was the flesh? He's, he was God the Word. He was God's spoken Word. We see every time. In John 1, 1 through 3, we see where he, every time that God spoke, back in Genesis 1, 1, every time that God spoke, he created things. And John 1 tells us that every that nothing was made that has been made without him. And he's God. Him who? Jesus. So why am I telling you all this? In my father's house are many rooms. And if it weren't true, person, your name, put your name in that slot. I would have told you. I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go prepare a place for you I'm going to send a band of angels coming forth to carry you home it's a neat song it's not true angels aren't coming for you well they may be with Jesus but he says I will come and take you to be with me where I am he's coming and you think how can he take that many people one time it's a miracle I mean how could God divide the sea and let the Egyptians through I mean let the um Jews through and then have it come crashing down on the Egyptians. How could he have a virgin birth a baby? How could he just uh, hover over the waters and create? I mean, God is a miracle. There's so many miracles, so many miracles. And people say, well, it's a bunch of fairy tales. 2,000 years of people, different people from different walks of life, different personalities, all saying it was a miracle, it was a miracle, it was a miracle, it was a miracle, and they recorded it. And there's a prophecy of this guy coming. And over here, this guy says he came. It's history. It's miracles. It's true. Jesus said, hey, if it weren't all true, if this was all a bunch of lies, if you're believing all this for no reason at all, you're basing your whole life on this. And it's all a lie. That's not what he said. He said, you're basing your life on this. And it's all true. It's all true. If it weren't true, I would have told you. And in my father's house there were many mansions there for you and I prepared a place for you and if I prepare a place for you I'm coming back to take you to be with me where I am and you know the place to where I'm going disciples said that we don't know where you're going so how do we know the way he said I am the way I am the truth you hear all these truths and they're not the truth I'm the truth and they say how what's the way to eternal life I'm the truth and they and I don't know I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. And if it weren't true, I would have told you. You know the way that I'm going. Jesus is very clear 
that he and the Father were one in these verses, that he's prepared a place for us in these verses, and that he's personally, he's not sending someone else. They, he may have a whole billion angels coming with him, but he personally will take you from this life to the next so you don't have to worry. You can trust him. He died for you. He's not a liar, and he's not a lunatic. You can trust him. He's not a legend. He's been proven, even historically, geographically, archaeologically proven. I'm not going to get into all that right now. So walk in it. It's one thing to know all this and read all these scriptures and do all these Bible stories and scripture writings. And yes, that's important. Uh, spiritual practices, it's important. Um, what's the proper word? Um, spiritual disciplines, I guess, is the buzzword. Um, that we do these things. Why? Because it teaches us. And what else does it do? It helps us to memorize. It helps us to remember these scriptures. Why? Because there'll be days that you don't believe it, y'all. There'll be days that you have a hard day and you're just like, I just, I don't know, I don't know. And it's like, it's true. Jesus isn't a liar. It's the truth. It's like, it is the truth, isn't it? It's like, yeah. Now, walk in it. Walk in it. What does that mean? Live it. Live it out. Everything that you're learning and reading in the Word of God, you have been firmly rooted from the, the beginnings of your salvation. You have been firmly rooted and built up in Him in the Word of God and in and hearing the Word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And you've heard it. And, um, and you're established in your faith because you've gone through trials and tribulations that have taught you to rely on God that He is real. He's not just... He's not just some fairy tale. He's the real thing. Why? Well, how do you know? Because you've lived it. And when you've been through stuff like that, nobody can tell you different. Nobody can tell you that your faith isn't real when it's what your personal testimony is because you have lived it. So what? Walk in it. Colossians 2, 6, and 7 teaches us to walk in it. Let's do that, y'all. I love you very much. I hope this helps you, and I'll talk to you again soon in our next daily devotion, and this is Better Than Therapy.